Good, welcome. Welcome to St Andrew's Church. Welcome to our 10.30 service of morning worship this morning. Lovely to have you. Uh, whatever kind of week you've had, I wonder if you've had a, uh, the sort of week where you just need to hear that God loves you and God is for you. We read a wonderful psalm in parish prayers this week, Psalm 56, which had those uh, lovely words, God is for you. God is for you. He's on your side and uh, he wants uh, to know you. He wants to comfort you. He wants to be with you. Uh, so just be reassured of that this morning. If you take nothing else away, God is for you and uh, he is on your side. And I hope um, uh, you are well. I hope you're surviving this second lockdown. It's different, isn't it? But it's harder for some uh, and it's been a challenge, but um, we will get through together. And uh, it's lovely uh, to be able to join in this morning in this time of worship. So I'm going to begin with the opening words of greeting from morning worship, which will come on the screen in just a moment. Uh, and then we'll go into our opening hymn. So do join in the responses in bold with me. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we say together, we have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. So we're going to do that now as we sing. Uh, do sing in your homes if you feel comfortable with that or just enjoy focusing on the words. I'm going to hand over to Phil and Alison uh, and Graham on the drums for Come, People of the Risen King.
risen King, that is what you are. You are chosen, you're special, you're a child of God. And we come together this morning to rejoice in that news. Uh, so my name is Peter, I'm the rector here at St Andrews. I'll be leading the service this morning. And uh, Ian, introduce yourself. Good morning. Say hello. Good morning. Thank you, Peter. Good morning, everyone. My name's Ian. I'm the Associate Minister here at St Andrews and All Saints. And it's a pleasure to be together this morning. It's, it's my first time really back in the, in the church building when there's been no congregation and it's really difficult. It's great to have Reuben, uh, Rupert and, and Ed here in, in the church building, but just myself and Peter are feeling quite, quite lonely, so I need, I need to reach out and give you all a hug. <laughs> so uh, it's good to be here. Brilliant. We're going to start with uh, an introductory activity, looking at money. We're uh, spending these two weeks looking at Christian giving and the subject of uh, finances and money. Um, and what better game could we play uh, related to money than who wants to be a millionaire? Uh, there you go. It's up on the screen there. And um, I'm going to uh, invite you to join in if you want to. Uh, first stage is going to be selecting down to our one contestant who's going to answer the two questions to earn their million. Uh, probably won't be a million pounds, it'll be a million something. Um, but uh, uh, that, that's the first stage. And then whoever we select uh, is going to have a go at these two questions we've got lined up for them. So in order to narrow down, if you want to play the game, uh, then you uh, need to either respond heads or tails, because Ian's got a coin here, and he's going to flip the coin. Uh, and if you respond correctly, then you're into the next round. And uh, we'll have to trust you to be very honest with this one. We're not going to be checking every single response. But if you get it right the first time, then you can enter again the second round and again the third round until we've got one person who is going to be our contestant. And if you could use the use the chat. Um, oh, some people are in there already. I mean, you're, 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 you're on top of uh, things. Very well done. So that a lot of guesses coming in already. Um, you've got to guess before Ian flips the coin. That's the key thing. Serena, <laughs> so you're not, wants, you're Serena, wants, to, Serena uh, wants some chocolate bars for Christmas. <laughs> a million chocolate <laughs> bars. He wants, uh, Brilliant. Um, right. So Ian, could we flip the coin for okay. the first time? Okay. First time. And uh, hold on a second. Let's just see if anyone else wants to enter. If you want to play on Facebook, you can. I've got the chat up on Facebook. Um, so you could do that if you want to. A couple more coming in. Okay. And what is the uh, first that's, coin flip? I told you, didn't I, when I was playing cricket and football, I used to, always used to call wrong when I, when I was captain and <laughs> flipped the toy. I always called tails, I did. For some reason, I always got it wrong. And it's uh, tails. <laughs> You would have got it right this time. Right, in that it's case, tails. all those who answered tails can have another go, okay? So we've reduced you to about half already. <laughs> I'm um, sorry, everyone that put heads. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. If you answered heads, I'm sorry you're out. Yeah. No, no million chocolate bars for you. Um, but, um, but if you answered tails, have another go. Type in uh, again your second guess. Um, and Philip Lubber is there already. Well done. Uh, excellent. We've got quite a few in. Lots going for tails again. I think it's uh, a fixed coin. I'm under, I think. Pressure. I'm under a wee bit of pressure. I didn't realise this. Okay, if you want to get the flip ready then. Okay, tell me when you're ready. Yeah. And then let's just hold on. Any other, any other answers? No, go for it. Okay. Ooh, tails. Tails again. <laughs> so all the heads, second time round, I'm afraid you, you're out. We're narrowing things down. Um, third guess. So those okay. of you who answered tails the second time, have another guess, and we will eventually get down to one person. Uh, let's see how many we've got left. How many are left in the... Uh, I just better, better just say, two. Peter, this, this coin does have two sides to it. I just checked. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think that's it. It's about, we're down to about eight, seven or eight, I think, as far as I can see on the chat. Let's give it another okay. go. Ready to go? So in football, in football land, we have to let it land on the on the ground, yeah, on the surface. Right, actually, yeah. I just realised. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Go for it. We ready? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna let it drop. Heads. Heads this time, just Heads. to prove it does have a head. Okay. Right. I think we're down to one, two, three, four, five, maybe. Did go again. Go again. You five. Wow. This could go on for quite a while, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Right, we've got, yep, yeah, uh, I, think, I think that's it. Yep, yeah, flip again. Ready to go? Go a bit further this time. Ooh, nice high 
Okay. So yeah. when you're ready. Yeah, I think that's everyone. Uh, heads. Heads again. Right. So that's, oh. We're down to Joe Snocken. I think Annette. No. Uh, Karen Clark. Is it Karen Clark and Joe Snocken? Could you answer again if you got it right? I think it's just Joe Snocken and Karen Clark. Can you can you answer differently as well, so we're not here all day? <laughs> <laughs> the best of three. <laughs> uh, is Anne Murphy? Okay. Uh, Anne's tails. Uh, so Joe's gone heads. Uh, Karen Clark's gone quiet. Uh, I think we're between Anne Murphy and Joe Snocken. Then is that right? So Anne's he tails, Joe's heads. Go for it. Is that right? I think I think that's it. As far as I can work out. I thought it was Karen and well, Joe, wouldn't it? Karen Clark and Joe. <laughs> I, know. I think Karen's not answered again. So. Oh, okay. Or maybe it was previous. Maybe she's, maybe she's previous. got cold feet. Maybe it was the previous one. Ready? Yeah. What are we on? Heads. Heads. That means it's Joe Snocken, right? <laughs> Joe, here are your questions then. Here we go. The um, technical team could get the first question up on the, uh, up on the board. Here it is. So um, you, you can, if you want to, go for 50-50 uh, or phone a friend. You can ask a friend to, to comment on the chat or you can ask the audience. Zoom can uh, pile in with what they think is the right answer if you want to. Jesus encouraged his disciples to store up treasures in A, a safe place, B, your bank account, C, heaven, or D, under the bed. So what, what are you going to go for, Joe? You're going for C, you are correct, under the bed. <laughs> Thank not, you, Martin. Not the church safe uh, then, Joe. Not the, <laughs> so uh, now this is a slightly harder one. This is for the million chocolate bars. So here we go. Second question. Which Bible verse has the phrase treasures in heaven where did Ooh. jesus say Ooh. treasures in heaven and again you might want to use your lifelines i think that's what they're called uh is it matthew 19 6 was it matthew 6 20 no looking was it matthew 6 19 or was it 2 corinthians 8 verse 6 where did jesus say she's going to ask the audience oh <laughs> right audience can you give us some help a b c or d what do you think no looking, no look, no quickly flicking up your Bibles. Oh, this, oh my goodness, the audience are not are not um, I think it's are not concluding very well on this so one. We've got a D, B, a B, and a C. G, C D. Uh, two Corinthians B, C. It's between B, C, and D. They're not giving me much help, are they? B, 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 D. Lots of Bs. There you go, Joe. You've used your lifeline, so we're going to have to press you for an answer. Taller family said B. Uh, oh, Joe has mm. gone B, and B is not correct. Oh. oh, after all that, after all that, it, it is C. It's Matthew six nineteen. I'm afraid. Oh. Sorry, Joe. No million chocolate bars for you. <laughs> it's only one verse out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give it a break. <laughs> That saved me. Uh, saved saved my wallet a bit. Saved you a million, Peter. Yeah, <laughs> that Good. was tough. That was hard. Yeah, that was I'm tough. sorry. Well done for everyone for joining oh. in. Um, but thinking about this sort of idea of our finances and money mm. and uh, Christian giving this morning, Ian's going to be preaching a little later on in the service. Mm. And one or two very brief notices for you. Uh, the next week's service is really exciting. We are going ahead with a fiftieth anniversary celebration. We'd originally planned to do a lovely weekend of, of events in the summer. Uh, that obviously got cancelled, but this um, uh, is actually 50 years, almost today, to the service of commissioning of this building. And so we felt we needed to mark that. So next Sunday service is going to be really special. Uh, we've got some memories from different people uh, who are around back at the time. We've got a, a, a reflection from John Alderman, a uh, reflection from John Curran, uh, the two rectors who've uh, uh, taken us through these 50 years. And of course, um, uh, Reg Mars, we can't get a reflection from Reg Mars, but Liz and Jenny uh, are going to be here and contribute to the service. They're going to light the Advent candle. And so it's going to be a really lovely service uh, looking back uh, over 50 years. And we'd love you, if you can, to send us in a little video, 20 second video of yourself, 
uh, uh, with a little memory of anything that's happened in the 50 years. Um, we're going to try and sort of edit those together, cut them in, and just put them together in a, in a short video piece for next week. So details will, of how to contribute will be going out on Tuesday in the church email. But if you can just film yourself sharing a 20-second memory of anything in the last 50 years, your experience of St. Andrews, that would be wonderful. Uh, and if, you've, um, uh, if you're taking part in the welcome video that we're planning as well, then if you could get those contributions in uh, as soon as possible, that would be great. Uh, Ian, any notices from it's you? Brilliant. I think it's wonderful that next weekend, the 30th, it's St. Andrew's Day as well, isn't it? Next, it is. From next weekend, yeah. so it's, it's yeah. really significant. Just a couple of short notices from me. I know that we've spoken a lot about the Lichgate in the last um, uh, month or two. Uh, just to say that there are some photographs, if you haven't seen them yet, they're, they're on the church website, some pictures of the, the restoration work in progress and as it reaches its completions. Well worth a look. Uh, thank you to everyone that's taken those photographs. Have a look on the website, that's brilliant. Yep. Super. Okay. Right, it's time for the children to head off to their Zoom groups. So. Um, uh, Zoom 66 are meeting now, um, Pathfinders, uh, and uh, for the young ones there's some, some craft activities uh, and uh, uh, things that Serena's been in touch with you about. So lovely uh, to have you with us, hope you've enjoyed uh, the start of the service and hope you enjoy your Zoom groups too. And thank you to uh, our Zoom uh, and Pathfinder leaders who, uh, who meet each week online with uh, our children and young people. So. Um, let me um, pray for those as we, uh, as we come to our confession. So Father, we pray for our children and young people. We thank you for each one of them. We pray for them during lockdown as they continue in their schools. Uh, and uh, we ask that you'd bless them. And uh, for those meeting online now in Zoom and uh, um, on Zoom 66 and Pathfinders, we pray that you'd bless them this morning with the message of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. So we come to a time of confession now and uh, we're very aware, uh, each of us, as to how we fail to live up to God's good and perfect standards. And uh, we come before the Lord now together to acknowledge that, to bring our brokenness before him. And you'll see the words on the screen. Uh, when it turns bold, you can join in with me. Jesus Christ said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith, we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. So Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. As we, and in our song we will praise our God. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. That phrase, setting our hearts on fire with love for you, is echoed now in the words of this next song. As the deer pants for water, so my soul longs after you. I'm going to hand over to Jane, accompanied by Phil, as they sing this for us. Thank you.
Now good to hear from God's Word. Mike Gibson is going to be reading that to us from Zoom, or from his home, through Zoom. And uh, thank you, over to you, Mike, for our two Bible readings, and then Ian will come and preach to us this morning. Thank you. Our first reading is from 2 Corinthians, chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. There is no need for me to write to you about this service to the Lord's people. For I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year, you in Achaia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But I am sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you in this matter should not prove hollow but that you may be ready, as I said you would be. For if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to say anything about you, will be ashamed of having been so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift you had promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And our second reading is from Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you very much, Mike, for our readings this morning. Bless you. Great to be together this morning and to to hear God's word still proclaimed in this place and and online and in our homes. Isn't it wonderful that we can still be together? Although we might be apart, God draws us together by his word. It's great to be together. We're following on this morning from last week when you remember Peter was talking about the joyful giver. And today we're continuing to look at that passage from 2 Corinthians. And today we were looking at the cheerful giver. A cheerful giver. And we could be forgiving for maybe asking, well, what's the difference really? What's the difference? Well, I've tried to tease that out a little bit, but we'll come back to that a little bit later on in the sermon. It's interesting in Paul's letter, he suggests that he's been quite wounded actually by accusations of a falsehood as far as the gospel was concerned. Even dishonesty may be implied on his part about his intention to provide a collection for the poor. 
Why was this? Well, Paul had used the initial enthusiasms of the Corinthian church as an example to the Macedonians, boasting, he said even, because of their example had stirred the Macedonian believers to follow suit in their willingness to give, to support his mission, to spread the gospel. Giving financially, as Peter reminded us last week, is something we tend not to talk too much about, particularly in church circles. And yet it's something that we all, we all recognise, don't we? It's critical critical for the church to to help spread the gospel and to support needs where they are, but also as a sign to bring hope. It's okay, though, we're on the subject of giving today, and our gospel reading comes from the Sermon on the Mount, doesn't it? But I can assure you this sermon is not the Sermon on the Amount this morning. Peter encouraged us to consider our own personal situations last week and that it's not just financial giving that makes a difference. Giving stretches out in so many ways, doesn't it? In time, giving attention, listening, praying, caring, fetching and carrying, giving of ourselves in all manner of practical ways for each other as well as for the work of the church. It's a very important message that whatever is given should be in good measure. In other words, giving is not about more, more, more. It's about what is appropriate and what we've considered in our hearts between us and God. This means that we should not feel guilty or awkward about this, for we, well, we're all different, aren't we? We all have different pressures and different circumstances, and our lives go through many changes. You know, I think, and I've pondered, we seem to be a, a good, good as a society to fashion getting more than giving, materially speaking. You know, this squashed economy we're suffering at the moment, is experiencing now, is, it's being based on spending more and more and more. It has to be good, I suppose, when nations prosper, for this leads to better security, better education, health care, jobs and standards of living, of course. But when we look about upon the world, if we're really honest, the vast majority of people do not always reap the benefits, do they? I guess the key message here in the Gospels and in Paul's writing, though, is that we can bring, we can begin to appreciate God's provision and how we are encouraged to live lives that seek not just more and more for ourselves, but to be moved to share God's gifts and provision with others and the wider world. When Jesus spoke on the mountainside, in the real sermon on the, on the mount, he gave us all a wonderful invitation to seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness and when you give to the needy, not to let our left hand know what our right hand is doing. In other words, we use one hand to greatly receive the goodness of God but the other hand to share it. So let us therefore not be tempted to hold tight for ourselves with both hands that which God has blessed us with. And we know that Jesus said, when you give to the needy, not if, when you give, as if it should be natural and instinctive, not under compulsion, and worse still, as Paul mentioned, grudgingly. You know, probably one of the best revelations I have had as a Christian is that I don't actually really own anything. I may be the keeper or responsible custodian of something, of course, and in human law, all my stuff, well, it belongs to me if I've paid for it or if it's been given to me. 
And yet my question is this, can we truly be the owners of anything that God has ultimately created? The scriptures remind us, don't they? For he is the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. It's an example, if you want to try this one day, it might be worth, just take out your, if you own a car, your V5 registration document and have a look at it. On there it actually says, you're not necessarily the owner, you're the registered keeper. It means you're responsible for registering the vehicle and the road tax, of course. You might be the owner, of course. You might have bought the car, but it doesn't say that on the registra registration document. It's interesting. This realisation that I don't own anything is in God's creation is quite freeing, really. Yes, I've said I'm responsible for things, and I, I can't just walk away from this accountability. But to be aware of my limitations as far as real ownership is concerned... I think it helps to shed a new light upon my attitude to self. I think you may have heard of the, uh, the popular Christian evangelist J. John. I don't want to take the credit for this, but he recalls a wonderful humorous story about the real ownership of donuts. If you look it up on YouTube, it's well worth a look. Oh, J. John. Donuts. Basically, one man thinks another man is stealing his donuts, whilst the other man is actually willingly sharing his with him. And of course, the whole point, of course, is that it is God who owns all the donuts. If I'm ever tempted to lay claim to something, even though on earth all the evidence suggests it belongs to me, it's a good reminder to me that it is God who really owns all the donuts. Paul says that we should seek to sow generously, for we will then reap generously. Each man and woman should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Remember the parable Jesus told of the rich farmer who benefits from such a good crop that he doesn't know what to do with it. But he decides to tear down his barns and build bigger ones. For then he will have all that he needs stored up for himself for the future. He says, I can now store all my grain for all my goods. I can take life easy. Eat, drink and be merry. But God says to him, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? And the parable concludes, this is how it will be with you, with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich towards God. The mistake the rich farmer had made, of course, was that he believed all his crop was his and he had no compulsion to take only what he wanted and to offer gratitude to God and to share the rest with others. Paul says in verse 8 of our reading from today, God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things and in all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. I think that this is the central message of our passage today. The difference between our wants and our needs. It does not say that God's grace will abound to our wants, but to our needs. And so often I think, I know I do, and I probably we all do, we get mixed up and confused that what I want is what I really need. You see, my wants are many, but my needs are really few. Yes, I want the best for my family and myself and my church and my nation and the world. Of course I do. We all do. But how often do we let our wants overtake our real needs? 
You remember a couple of weeks ago, back when we're, some of us here on the water side, we lost our mains water supply for about 24 hours or so. It was a real shock, wasn't it? And a wake-up call. And when we lose such an essential need, it affected so many parts of our everyday life. I was in this particular predicament to ponder, well, I've got an egg cup full of water to brush my teeth on that day, and what am I going to do? I can't flush the toilet. That's a big problem. Paul encourages the church in Corinth to not be only joyful givers, but as we have heard today, cheerful givers too. So is there any difference? I think we could just about squeeze a piece of paper down the, down the gap of the two if we really tried. It was worth looking up in the dictionary. Well, joyful, the dictionary compares delightful, jolly, merry, bright and sunny. And for cheerful, we could write gladness, comforting, good spirits, encouraging. And I like this, notably happy and optimistic. Notably happy and optimistic. They're all lovely, positive qualities on what should be our attitude when applied to our giving. So can we be notably happy and optimistic in our giving? I think we can. It's a great encouragement. Somebody sent this lovely other translation which we picked up from the Greek word, bless you, John. This Greek word for cheerfully, when translated into English, is hilarious. Hilarious. Can we be hilarious about our giving? final word as we have spoken last week but we didn't quite get to it in our passages today but it's worth going there Paul goes on to urge the Corinthian church to be mindful that not only it is in God who supplies the seed to the, to the sower and the bread for the food he also supplies the abundance not to hoard but to share isn't that wonderful it's a great reminder and an encouragement for us all that we cannot outgive him. Whatever we give from the heart, God can multiply. So whether joyfully or cheerfully, giving is a matter of the heart. God supplies seed to the sower who is encouraged to sow, ge to sow generously, to take only what he needs, and then cheerfully to share with those who are in need. But it's not for personal gain or glory, but for the thanksgiving to flow back to God, the maker of heaven and earth. And as Paul finishes in this chapter, Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Amen. Thank you so much, Ian. Yeah, what a lovely message. Hilarious giving, I, I love that. And uh, this idea that uh, God owns everything anyway, we're just uh, looking after the things that we've been given. Thank you so much, Ian. Yeah, a really encouraging uh, reflection this morning on uh, those verses on the subject of Christian giving and our finances. God can transform our giving into uh, duty-free, into hilarious, joyful, cheerful giving, uh, which is a lovely thing to do. And uh, Val Mead is now going to sing a song to us which speaks of actually the way we, we, when we give, we give of ourselves, just as God has given to us. Uh, all I am, I lay it down. Over to you. Thank you, Val. Search 
for reflection on uh, this idea of Christian giving, giving all of ourselves uh, to God. I'm going to respond now to what we've heard by saying together the ancient words of the creed, these foundational Christian beliefs uh, that we adhere to and that we hold to and that we rejoice in. So do join in with me. The words will be coming on the screen in just a moment. And uh, we say the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. I'm going to turn to a time of prayer. John Clifton is going to lead us in our prayers this morning. Over to you on Zoom, John. Should we all bow in prayer before God's throne of grace? God, our Father, we're looking at this teaching on giving. And we see that in giving us your only son, you have given us everything. He died at immeasurable cost to set us free from sin and to bring us to you and to give us eternal life. Lord, we worship you. And Lord, as we give our gifts, please remove from us any sense of compulsion. We pray that you'd fill us with great joy and cheer, particularly as we see the Holy Spirit using our gifts. And we pray that he will multiply their impact, not only in this parish, but also in places like Rwanda and Hope Gardens in India and other places too, so that people may hear the good news of Jesus Christ and turn to God. We pray that the hungry and the needy will be satisfied. Heavenly Father, we turn to you for our uh, needy world at this time. And we pray for the governments of this world. And we pray for them, Lord, that you will give them wisdom and integrity during these difficult days. We pray also for relief from the virus. We pray for successful vaccines. And we pray for those whose health has been greatly impaired through this pandemic. And for those who've lost their jobs are in and are in economic hardship. And we say to you, Lord, please have mercy. Father, we pray for those who are unwell, those that we know, and we mention them in the silence. Father, we pray for those who mourn, and we particularly mention Chris Wayne and Ian McGill at this time. And Father, we pray for relief for those who are finding the lockdown trying and difficult. Lord, touch our hearts and our lives with your Holy Spirit, we pray. And finally, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. We praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, John, for leading us in our prayer time this morning. We're going to continue in prayer with the Church of England prayer for today, the collect for Christ the King, the last Sunday before Advent. Eternal Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King, Keep the church in the unity of the spirit and in the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet 
who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we pray together the morning collect, the collect uh, which we will share together, and the words are on the screen there. We say together, Eternal God and Father, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We bring our time of prayer to a close by saying together the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. We say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to hand over now to Paul and Sandy Spanton as we have our final hymn this morning, Take My Life, this ongoing theme of offering ourselves to God, first and foremost. Thank you.
you so much for joining us this morning. Do stay on for coffee time if uh, you've got a few minutes to spare. Uh, and if you're on Zoom, you can join in our breakout groups as well after that. Uh, during coffee time, we're hoping to speak to Pippa, our treasurer, uh, along this theme of finance. She's going to give us a bit of a summary as to what we've been giving this year and the uh, situation of our finances, and uh, just to put us a bit more in the picture. And we're also um, uh, looking forward to catching up with, with your news and seeing how your week's gone. Uh, let me uh, finish by saying thank you. Thank you to everyone who's taken a part, particularly to our musicians who week by week uh, record themselves and uh, enable us to worship uh, and join in together on a Sunday morning. Thank you so much to you. Uh, it's great to, to have that ministry uh, so available and so readily given uh, to serve the whole church. Let's close then with the words of the grace. You can put your uh, screen on gallery view if you want to for this. Uh, and uh, some people like to uh, just put their hands out uh, so that you can see everyone's uh, uh, offering of this uh, prayer together. So let's share the words of the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you. We'll have a brief instrumental now while you have a chance to get up and make yourself a cup of tea or a coffee. And we'll be back in just a few moments. <laughs> Welcome back, welcome back. Lovely to uh, see you all and um, uh, it'd be great to get the chat up so you can share any news in the chat uh, other than uh, whether you're voting heads or tails. That would be good. Gutted for Joe. Gutted no, for Joe. Those million really. chocolate bars. Oh, no, no. no, we're well, sorry Joe, sorry Joe. I forgot if Ed's got me on or not. I don't, um, I don't think so. So, um, no. No. 
We have, uh, last week we were able to show the quilt that was made for Ben Pavitt right at the end, but it'd be lovely to show that right at the start this week so um, more people get to see it. And I don't know if Ros or Connie would like to just share something about the idea, either on the chat or, um, uh, uh, or, or maybe even um, if we can hear you, if you want, want to unmute yourselves. Uh, it's a lovely quilt made for, for Ben. Uh, I'm just looking to our technical team. Are we able to get that up? Yeah, that's um, isn't that stunning? You can see all the oh, little wow. uh, all the little patterns. Ian, you've been to Rwanda, haven't you? You probably recognise some of those fabulous those colours. Yeah, fabric. wonderful colours, aren't they? Beautifully, beautifully done and, and, and stitched together. Doesn't it look fantastic? Um, it was a lovely project that um, the group who went yeah. to Rwanda got together and uh, decided to make that for. For Ben, he's not well at the moment, um, going through uh, chemotherapy and uh, having a pretty tough year, to be fair. Um, yeah. So, but I think that cheered him up a little. Uh, I, I don't know if Ros um, Ros Reed is there, but um, I just need to check something. Steve uh, Steve Pittis has said Joe's got it right. I'm just going to get my Bible because <laughs> we might have an appeal. Oh dear. <laughs> Ros, Ros, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I've unmuted myself. Fantastic. Do you want to, do you want to just tell us a, a bit about the, the, the quilt and the, the idea you had for that? Well, it was initially Connie's idea. She said, well, it would be nice to make a quilt. We'll have to find somebody who can actually sew it together. So I said, well, I could sew it together. Um, having always done sewing and such like. Not that I'd ever made a quilt before, but uh, nothing venture, nothing gained. So uh, we got together and we chose the materials to go with it. And Connie went round and got the various contributions from all the different people who'd been to Rwanda together. And... Um, then we sewed it together. It took us quite a little while, I have to say, but uh, it was lovely actually because um, we felt that all the time we were able to sew in um, the love and care and concern that we had for Ben and um, also to have fellowship together while we were doing it. So it was a, a really nice project to be able to do. Oh, thank you so much, Ros, for sharing that. I love that idea of sewing in the love and care mm -hmm. uh, for Ben. And uh, yeah, Susie's just saying, cheered up the whole family. And um, Ben, uh, uh, I think, did I read Ben uses it every night? Did an amazing job, uses it every night, yeah. Yeah, so um, thank you, that's lovely. Now, I, I think I'm gonna be very embarrassed now, aren't I? Is that right, Ian? Because <laughs> did, did the rector get it wrong? Did, is, well, um, <laughs> we're going to, it's gone to oh, appeal, it's gone to VAR, it's a, this one. A VAR? Yeah, this one's gone to VAR, or the, oh, no. the third umpire. This might cost me a million um, chocolate bars if I got this. Uh, according to Matthew's Gospel, um, the verse is uh, chapter 6, verse 20. Oh. Store up yourselves treasures in oh, heaven, no. where moths and rust and vermin do not destroy. So it's... Verse 20. Oh. I think we said it was verse 19, which oh, is... How embarrassing. Uh, it actually repeats it. Oh, oh. Ah, so you've got, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. And then verse 20, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. So it is actually 20. Oh, Joe, Joe. Oh. A million to... chocolate bars coming. <laughs> well spotted, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate time, yes. <laughs> Oh, how oh, embarrassing. Dear. I'm sorry, Joe. You were right and I was I wrong. I think we need a rerun. <laughs> I think we need a rerun, Joe. I can see you. What was the next question, anyway, after that? that is it that too was, late to go? That was it. Uh, that Did, was, is it too yeah. late to go back? No, no, no. She's done it. She got it right. She won oh, that was it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, that, was okay. the, that was the million chocolate bar oh, question. So oh, I got, I got she's, you. She's got it. Okay. Uh, oh. And the audience were right as well. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm fully, uh, fully corrected. Stand corrected. Well done, Steve. We've got one reverend that got it right anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very oh, good. dear. Um, now, I don't know if Pippa is there, but it'd be lovely to just hear briefly from Pippa, our treasurer. The last couple of weeks, we're uh, looking at this giving review and uh, looking at how uh, we give. And um, Pippa, our treasurer, uh, works 
incredibly hard at, at organizing our finances and making everything work and uh, uh, doing lots of uh, expense claims and, and payments to all kinds of different things. Um, Pippa, are you there? Could you give us a, a, a brief snapshot of, uh, of our finances and, and what you do and uh, uh, how we're getting on as a church? Well, yeah, first of all, Peter, you asked me to remind everybody that we actually employ 10, 10 um, members of staff. The last one we added was um, probably be quite invaluable this year with Ian, so who's a great asset. But I would like to thank Annette, who has negotiated her way through the, go the government furlough scheme rules, because it's allowed us to keep on our coffee house staff, the church um, cleaner and caretaker on the payroll. But we will be picking up a little deficit as, as the church, because that doesn't cover all their costs. But that, that's great. Um, we've been talking a lot about giving. Um, uh, we estimate that our giving will be down about £20,000 this year. And that's really down to the loss of the physical collections in church and it being at the end of our three year giving cycle, where giving always pops down. Uh, but I did want to thank those who've gone, have switched to giving to bank transfers, giving to bank transfers. That's very helpful. But for those who want to keep giving via the green envelopes, you'll have seen in the uh, church news email this week, there was some information on how to keep giving via your green envelopes. Um, our trading in, um, income has been greatly affected this year. It's down about half that it was last year, which is about £30,000. And that's really mainly due to the lack of rental for the church centre rooms. So that's quite sad. And also it won't have um, surprised any of you that we've had to increase our IT costs this year. And that's just to enable us to do things like this, to Zoom. So lots of licenses and upgrades required. So after taking all that into account, we will be projecting a small loss, a loss at the, in the accounts at the end of the year. But please don't worry in the church, the, the PCC is very prudent and it actually keeps six months worth of funds in reserve. Um, and so we can cover this year's loss from our reserves. But there are some good news is it's not all doom and gloom. Our designated donations, that's where people give to a certain um, cause, are uh, up tremendously. So in 2020, so far, you've raised over £1,600 for Hope Gardens, which is in, in addition to what you've been giving direct on the Hope Gardens website. Over £5,000 to Rwanda. £2,600 to the, Lin, the Lindhurst Deanery um, Appeal for Rwanda. £5,000 each to the Waterside and Southampton Food Banks. So that's a total of 19, over £19,500. And that's in addition to the £19,000 of tithes from 2019 that we, we give out to, to, to OM, World Horizons, Praising Hands. And of course, we will still be giving out our tithes for 2020 as well, once the accounts have been settled. And also, we fully funded the free meal service for the first time we, we ran it through grants and lots through your donations, so thank you. And we've just received a grant from the Dibden Allotments to help fund the current free meal service. So although we will be making a loss, it's not all doom and gloom, and this is an amazingly generous church, so thank you. Oh, Pippa, that's so lovely. Brilliant. Thank you for being encouraging, even though there's some uh, difficult figures, there's some really encouraging things in there as well, aren't there? Um, lovely to, um, uh, to hear some of those uh, wonderful ways in which people have given to such significant causes this year in particular, uh, in the midst of a pandemic. So, um, Good, I think it's almost time. Do you want, do you want to say anything else, Ian? Almost oh, time just, to say goodbye to the live streams. But. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you, really. I think that's wonderful, wonderful news in, in, tough, in tough times. And um, as Pippa was giving that message, really, my mind was going back to, although I wasn't here at the time, my mind goes back to when uh, the church started to pray 
uh, towards the end of the 1990s, you know, for the centre and giving for the centre, which we know was, was fantastic. But part of that was actually giving beyond the church building here, but then giving some of that, what was collected, away. And I think that, that testimony has stayed with this church ethos all this time, that it's not just about us in here, God's kingdom is bigger, uh, and that goes on, continues to go on, and I think giving beyond these walls is such a wonderful blessing, and uh, thank, thank, thank everybody that, for, that continue to support in that way, really, because it's not just about us here, is it? it's about God's kingdom everywhere. So brilliant, thank you. It's an encouraging note to finish mm. on. We're going to wave goodbye to uh, the live streams at this point. Uh, oh, just a, a very quickly a message in from Susie. Um, Ben's had a, an allergic reaction um, to some of the chemo, so we're going to need further tests uh, before treatment continues. So let's um, we'll pray particularly for, for Ben for that reaction this week. Thank you, Susie. Yeah. Uh, I think that's everything. Chocolate bars on the way, Joe. And uh, let's um, wave goodbye to uh, all those on YouTube and Facebook. It's lovely to uh, have you join us. If uh, everyone on Zoom could wave, that's great. Okay. And uh, it's amazing to think there. I think there are 33 joining us live on YouTube oh, and about fantastic. eight, eight yeah. or, or so on Facebook as well. Just so. done that, Peter. Just before we go, before we, we disappear, I know that there, there may have been a possibility for some of the uh, residents at Little Haven. I think they might have been able to hook up on Zoom the last couple of weeks, which a message came in. Uh, I know Viv, Viv's been very uh, instrumental in trying to get that working. So if, if, if the people in Little Haven are there and you've seen us, bless you. It's great to have you with us this morning. It's great. Hopefully we can continue that going as well. That is really, really lovely. Super. And uh, if you're on Zoom, you should have an invitation to breakout groups if you've got another five or so minutes just to chat with one another and share some more personal uh, stories about how your week's been going. You should receive an invitation any minute now. Thank you.